Questions from the internet, we love them. And today we're talking chains, sprockets, and chain tension. Welcome back to the Power of Public YouTube channel. We really love the questions from the internet. It really helps us make our videos better for you guys. So keep them coming. Add those comments below. If you're liking the videos, please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up as well. In today's video, we're going to cover a couple of simple topics that are really good for the new guys that are wondering uh, what all the go-kart stuff is about. Now, we've got different types of chains here, different rear sprockets, and obviously different front sprockets and some chain loop. I'm going to tell you what you need to do and when to do it. So let's get to it. Okay, so the question was chain lengths, tensions, and gearing setups for fast and slow tracks. Now, this guy is currently running a 1289 and was wondering if that's geared for slow or fast acceleration. Okay, so we have an entry level chain here. This is the DID black chain. These are retail for $40 here in Australia. And this is going to suit most engines in the lower horsepower bracket or if you're replacing them every weekend okay they don't have a super long lifespan but they work perfectly fine so you can use these if you like next up we've got the gold chains these are a higher quality chain than the black entry level and these retail for about sixty dollars here in australia and these are better for your one two five sort of high powered engines they're still not going to last so you've got to keep your eye on them and make sure you use plenty of lube and in between each session Try not to go out to the track skipping uh, lube between each session, otherwise you'll, the chain will start to get hot and the links wear out super quick. And then you start chewing up your chains and your sprocket. And then in the top end of the scale, we've got the DID O-ring chain. Now these are exceptionally good chains. They will outlast these chains two, three, five. They're about $100 each. You can use these for months on end. They are really good. Now, the one thing you do have to watch out is that before they will sort of fail in the pin in the bush, the pin actually wears out. That's how long they last. So these are exceptionally good for your one, two, five Rotax, IAMIs, when they're not running any restrictors, restrictors at all, and they're full power, full torque, and these ones can take the punishment day in, day out. So here we've got first type of sprocket. We only stock two here, but there's different brands out there, that's for sure. This one here is a gold speed. It's a standard sprocket. It's got some holes drilled in it for lightweightness. <laughs> I guess a <laughs> reduced weight. But then we've got the extreme racing sprocket. Now this has got bigger windows cut in every opportunity. And this is much lighter. But if you start hitting curbs, it's going to bend very easy because there's it, it's not very rigid. So be careful with these ones. They are lighter, but they are a little bit more fragile. So now we come up to gear ratios. Now traditionally at our local tracks, we're going to run around the high 70s to the low 80 rear sprockets and 10s and 11s on our front sprockets. But what does that all mean? Okay, so what we're talking about first is the rear sprockets. Now these come in all different sizes. Right up, we stock 86 is our biggest and all the way down to 70, which can get some on either side of that as well. Now what this means is, as you go bigger in the rear sprocket, it's better for acceleration. But you'll notice, as you add rear teeth, if you're running a Micron 5 with GPS speed, that your kilometers per hour in the top of the straight, it will start to decrease. So, you want to run, generally speaking, the least amount of teeth possible for each circuit, so that you're going the fastest at the end of the main straight, so you can affect better passing opportunities against your opposition. Now, as you go down on your rear sprocket, you'll start to increase your kilometers per hour up to a point because obviously the straights are only so long and you're going to run out of time to reach your maximum kilometers per hour. So, as the straights get longer, you're going to use smaller rear sprockets, and as the straights get shorter, i.e., tight, twisty tracks, you're going to use bigger rear sprockets. So, that's going to give you better acceleration, where your smaller rear sprockets is going to give you better top end speed but less acceleration. Okay, another thing you can change is your front sprocket. You can use it here, this is the Rotax smallest front sprocket, is an 11 tooth, and then you've got the 12 tooth, and then if you go to a really 
fast flowing track with long straightaways, you could maybe potentially put a 13 front sprocket on. But that would be pretty extreme. The difference in the front sprockets is about six teeth equivalent on the rear. So if you had a 1170 sprocket combination and you went to the 12, if you wanted the same gear ratio, you'd put a 1276. And it's the same for your X30 or iArmy engines. We've got, they go down to a 10 front sprocket and an 11 for the faster flowing tracks. Now that's because the iArmy engines generally have more RPM range, i.e. instead of peaking out at 14,000 RPMs like the Rotax, they can rev all the way up to 16,000. So we like to rev them a little harder so we have less teeth on the gear ratio i.e. it's a 10 front instead of the 11. So it's going to accelerate a little bit better, but it doesn't quite have the torque of the Rotax engine. If you put the same gear ratio on the Rotax, it's going to accelerate really, really quickly off the corner, but then you're going to be a sitting duck down the end of the main straight. So it's always a compromise. Remember, your gear ratio is not going to set the world's fastest lap just because you, you know, jag the right gear ratio. It's mostly just to see if you can pass your competitor at the end of the straight or you know in one part of the track where you're suffering and you're too vulnerable we need to change gear ratio so keep that in mind set the gear ratio roughly for the track after talking to everybody else and doing some testing and then be prepared to modify one tooth up or one tooth down so that you can really dominate the competition okay so next up i want to show you what the chain tension should look like on this Tony Kart 801. So with your chain tension, you're gonna want about 10 to 15 millimeters of free movement here. And you wanna check it in a few spots. So that's probably a little tight just there. But when you run it through, that's probably optimum. Now, this is a brand new chain. You can normally set them up a little bit tight as a brand new and as they wear, they'll just loosen up. So after its first run, double check the chain tension and always re-lube your chain in between each run. So there you have it, that's gear ratios explained. If you find the video helpful, please consider subscribing and turning on those notifications. If you've got any questions, please leave it in the comment section below and we'll do our best to make a video for you. Also, if you want to follow along, Power Republic is on Instagram and Facebook at Power Republic or go to our website www.powerrepublic.com.au Grab yourself a new chain, and a new sprocket. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.